Some of the chemicals inside this nonstick pan could be hazardous to human health. Also, the chemicals used to make it back at the factory. However, that doesn't necessarily mean this is dangerous to cook with. In fact, the weight of scientific evidence and expert opinion is on the side of this being quite safe to cook with, as long as you don't get it way too hot. And even if you did that, it probably wouldn't be a very big deal, unless you already have a cardiorespiratory disease or if you are a bird. But it's not all good news. Bad chemicals used in the production process of pans like these are everywhere in our environment. They're probably in your body right now, whether you cook with one of these or not. Details? Field trip to the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences in Durham, North Carolina, where Dr. Mimi Huang is a postdoctoral fellow at the National Toxicology Program. Hey, does she cook with Teflon? Uh, yes, I do, because uh, I'm really lazy and I don't feel like soaking my pans in the, in the sink just to scrape off the stuff off the bottom. Scientists, they're just like us. So what is Teflon? Well, Teflon is a brand name. For the rest of this video, we're going to try to refer to the chemical at the heart of all such pans, PTFE. Yeah, and so that's basically just a carbon chain with um, a ton of fluorines all around it, and it makes it, because of the way it, the chemical is, it makes it very uh, resistant to reacting with other sorts of chemicals or dissolving other chemicals, which makes it a very good nonstick coating. And that's the same factor that makes these things pretty safe to cook with. The manufacturers may tell you to replace them the second you scratch them and they start to chip, but... As I mentioned before, the chemical structure makes it pretty inert, and so if you were to ingest you know, a chip of your Teflon pan, that would probably go through your system pretty harmlessly. Good, because I'm guessing I probably ate that chip there. A lot of manufacturers also tell you to never put your nonstick pans in the dishwasher. Dr. Huang says that probably doesn't have anything to do with safety. I'd imagine their main concern would be just it might degrade the coating faster and so that would decrease the um, quality of their pans and so to avoid unhappy customers they might recommend not putting in the dishwasher or uh, getting new ones after they scratch it. Plus I'm sure that encourages people to buy more, right? Aha! You know, about 10 years ago, I decided I'm going to stop tearing my nonstick pans to shreds. I'm going to get a really nice expensive one and I'm going to treat her right. I literally scratched it the very first time I used it. Nonstick pans scratch and chip. It's what they do. Funny enough, when you make a chemical that doesn't stick to things, it's hard to make it stick to things like the bottom of the pan. I strongly believe that my possessions should serve me. I should not serve them. So my approach these last few years has been to buy relatively inexpensive nonstick pans, use them, abuse them, and just replace them every few years. There actually is one health risk posed by PTFEs in the kitchen, and that is a very rare disease called polymer fume fever. It's a thing that can happen if you overheat your pans. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Real quick, let me thank the sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. Some people might think, oh, Adam Ragusea, he's a big time time internet cook now, he'd never use a meal kit delivery service. Nah, dude, I'm a sucker for a kit of any kind. They send you these meal bags, and each one has exactly what you need to knock out a delicious, healthy plate in like a half hour, all in precise, pre-measured quantities. Look at that hotel mini bar bottle of vinegar, adorable and recyclable, like most of this. The instructions are simple and easy to follow, but it's still real cooking, and the result is really satisfying. Without HelloFresh, I rarely have the bandwidth to produce a traditionally square meal. You know, a protein, a starch, and a veg. But there's other styles too. They got vegetarian, calorie smart, family friendly, even craft burgers. HelloFresh is flexible. You can keep it basic or add sides like garlic bread or dessert. And HelloFresh is cheap, now from $6.99 per serving. You want to try this? I can get you eight meals for free. That's $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Just go to HelloFresh.com and enter my offer code ADAMRAGUSIA80. That's in the description. Okay, the so-called Teflon flu. This really is a thing that you can get from working with these pans. If you get them really, really hot, they will start to vaporize. So basically, it'll come off of the pans. And then if you breathe it in, you can basically get a little flu. Fever, chills, that kind of thing. But in most known cases, it only lasts a day or two, and then that's it. Researchers believe it only poses a serious health risk to people who are already sick and or people who breathe in a ton of the fumes. Also, yes, birds, nonstick pans, do kill birds. That is a thing that veterinarians talk about. Now, how hot do you need to get this thing before you risk the flu? This is at like temperatures way higher than I presume most people are using. These are temperatures that would burn your food and you would clearly see some degradation of the pan that you're using at the temperatures where this happens. 
degradation like, say, this. This is a picture of the pan involved in one of the tiny handful of documented cases of anybody in their kitchen giving themselves polymer fume fever. This happened in 2012. A 29-year-old guy in Japan put some water on the boil for pasta, but he forgot about it and he fell asleep. He woke up five hours later and found his room full of some kind of smoke. He grabbed the pan, he ran it to the sink, and then when he poured water into it, an explosive vapor came out from the surface of the pan, which he breathed in. So that's kind of a worst case scenario in the kitchen, right? And what happened to him? He had a fever, he had a cough, and he was a little bit short of breath. It was way better by the next day, and by the third day, he was back to normal. Here's a chart showing documented cases of polymer fume fever in the U.S. When it says four in 2012, that's not short for 4,000, that's four. And Dr. Huang says most of those cases are not people working in their kitchens, it's people working in factories. It's where workers are, you know, putting the coating on themselves and they're very much exposed to it. So a lot more cases are in that um, realm. Um, there have been a couple cases in the general population, um, maybe two, I think, in the past decade. Um, that's been re recorded, right? So we don't know the ones that haven't been recorded. Indeed, I get a little sick all the time. And if my pan were to blame, I'm not sure that I would put two and two together. There are a lot of estimates about what temperature will cause a non-stick coating to become dangerous. Most experts would say you shouldn't take them past 500 degrees Fahrenheit, but they don't start to break down until about 570 Fahrenheit, and they don't really get going until 662 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's do an experiment. Non-stick pan goes under the broiler and I'll take its temperature with my fancy infrared thermometer. It took more than 20 minutes for this to reach the danger zone, and that's with the pan being empty. If you have food in there, it's gonna absorb a lot of the heat. When I did my pan pizza recipe from the other day in my non-stick, the exposed rim of the pan wasn't anywhere near the danger zone by the time the pizza was cooked. Now up on the burner, the story is a little different. When I put this on high, it hit the danger zone in about four minutes, so don't do that. I might occasionally use high heat with this pan, but only with lots of food in it. You don't want to preheat this empty for the purposes of, say, searing a steak. And there'd be no reason to, because if you properly sear a steak in a normal pan, it's not gonna stick. This is more for gentle, delicate things like eggs. And even with these experiments I did, the pans were just starting to get overheated. They didn't break down visibly at all. And Dr. Huang thinks you'd probably have to get your face right in there and breathe in those fumes to risk getting sick. Now, before we finish, there's something more serious to discuss. For many years, manufacturers used a chemical called PFOA, PFOA, in the process of making these. PFOA is bad stuff. It's a possible carcinogen and it lasts for forever in the environment. There have been many lawsuits involving people who lived near the factories getting really sick, but... There really is a very minimal amount of residual PFOA or other perfluorinated chemicals in the non-stick pans, like, you know, thousands of folds levels lower than what is observed in the water or uh, food. So good news, it's not in the pan. Bad news, it's everywhere else. It's in the water and it's probably in your blood right now. Industry has been phasing out PFOA for this reason, but there's concern about the chemical process they're now using instead. So is that a reason to not buy non-stick pans? To avoid supporting an industry that is introducing these chemicals into our environment? Well, maybe, but the thing is non-stick coatings are everywhere. This is just the place where you're most aware of them. They're in electrical cables, cosmetics, popcorn bags, dental floss, basically any stain or water-resistant fabric, carpets, furniture, clothes. These coatings are everywhere, and so are the potentially hazardous chemicals used to produce them. That is a fact of modern life, whether you cook in one of these or not. 